Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Michelle Lee, and I am a senior here at North Allegheny. Today, I'll be talking to you about a silent epidemic that's occurring all around us, and it's called MRSA. MRSA, or MRSA, officially stands for Methicillin-Resistant Staphylococcus aureus. You can see why we just call it MRSA. And many of you have probably heard of MRSA before because it's received a lot of publicity lately, with over 11 million hits on Google and even a World MRSA Day that takes place in October. Now, MRSA first caught my attention a few years ago when I read in the newspaper that a few healthy high school athletes had died from MRSA infections. More recently, MRSA has found its way into our supermarket, in our poultry and our beef. So what exactly is this MRSA? Well, it's a type of staph bacteria that is resistant to antibiotics that usually treat staph infections. That means that if you have a MRSA infection, it will not get better by using common antibiotics, like penicillin, for example. About 2% of the U.S. population has MRSA living on their skin. And although this may not seem like a lot, that translates to 6 million people. Usually, MRSA causes skin infections, but it can also spread to other parts of the body and become more invasive and potentially fatal. It is known often as the superbug because it can withstand and resist so many different types of, of antibiotics. So if you're wondering what this potentially deadly bacteria looks like, I found kind of a mugshot online. Well, this is actually a MRSA stuffed animal. And yes, MRSA has become so publicized within the past few years that there's now even a plush toy to go along with it. I mentioned before that MRSA is a type of staph bacteria, or Staphylococcus aureus. Now here's a picture of what staph looks like under the microscope, magnified by about 10,000 times. So this would not be visible with the naked eye. Its long name literally translates to golden grape clusters, which is exactly what it looks like. Now, ordinary staph is found on the skin of about 30% of people, but usually it's harmless and doesn't cause any problems. If it does cause a skin problem, for example, it's treated using common antibiotics, unlike methicillin-resistant staph aureus, or MRSA, which cannot be treated using these antibiotics. So how do you get MRSA? Well, usually it's spread by direct skin-to-skin -skin contact. So if a person that has a MRSA infection that has fluids draining out of it, for example, and he touches someone else that has a cut, maybe on his hand, this is how MRSA is usually transmitted. And this is why some of the highest risk groups are contact sport athletes, so our football players and our wrestlers, for example. Now, if someone has a MRSA infection and he touches a surface or an object, this can also become contaminated. And MRSA has been found on surfaces from keyboards to cell phones and even athletic equipment. So who can get MRSA? Well, the answer is anybody. And MRSA used to only infect, many years ago, the elderly hospitalized population, but now it's been spreading to young people in the community. The people that are at highest risk are the ones that are at contact with one another frequently and are in crowded conditions. So this would be athletes, soldiers, college students, and people at daycares. So why should you care about MRSA? Well, I'm going to give you several compelling reasons why. If you look at this graph here from the Centers for Disease Control, you'll see that MRSA has caused about 20,000 deaths a year. This means that it causes more deaths a year than both AIDS and the swine flu. MRSA also causes about 95,000 invasive infections a year. An invasive infection is just a severe infection that has spread throughout the body to maybe your bloodstream or your lungs or possibly your bones. Secondly, MRSA is the silent epidemic. And if you look at this graph, it shows the years from 1993 to 90, 19, or 2005 on the x-axis, 
and the number of hospital admissions with MRSA on the y-axis, from zero to 400,000. Now you can see clearly that MRSA has been steadily increasing, and today it causes about 300,000 hospitalizations a year. But perhaps the most concerning thing about MRSA is that it's resistant to so many different types of antibiotics. That means treatment options may be running out. So how exactly did this resistance occur? Well, it's developed over the past few decades as a result of our overuse and misuse of antibiotics. And I'll show you that kind of with this diagram. So many years ago, most bacteria was non-resistant, as shown by the green bacteria, and little to no bacteria was resistant, shown by the orange. However, as we started using antibiotics, we killed off the non-resistant ones, leaving the resistant ones to survive and multiply. And that has created the problem that we have today. So how do you know if you have a MRSA infection? What does it look like? Well, MRSA skin problems can look like pimples, they can look like bug bites, for example, or other ordinary skin infections. So oftentimes, they're mistaken for a harmless infection. And if you have an infection that looks like this at this point, and it is MRSA, if you treat it with the right antibiotics, it should get better right away. However, if you ignore it, or you try treating it with penicillin, for example, it can spread throughout your body, or it can proceed to a more severe skin infection called an abscess, which is basically a big pus-filled sac, and it's very painful. But I don't want you all to think that if you have pimples or a bug bite, it's automatically MRSA, because um, it's only MRSA, or you should only be concerned if it doesn't get better after a while, if it doesn't respond to standard antibiotics. MRSA is tested by going to a doctor's office where they will take either a sample of your skin or maybe of your nose, as shown in that picture, and they'll send it to a laboratory to be grown on a Petri dish. The treatment for MRSA differs depending on what type of infection you have. So if you have a skin infection, for example, you'll receive specific MRSA-targeted oral antibiotics, which are called trimethoprim sulfamethaxazole, which is certainly another mouthful. If you have a more severe abscess, which again is the pus-filled infection, you'll get a procedure called incision and drainage. And that's essentially where the doctor cuts open your skin and um, he removes the bacteria and the pus. If you have a more severe invasive infection, you'll receive intravenous antibiotics or sometimes surgery. So hopefully I've conveyed to you that MRSA is a very serious problem. And already some hospitals are testing all of their admitted patients for MRSA so they can isolate them and treat them appropriately. Now, this has shown to decrease the number of MRSA infections so effectively that now people in the community are wondering, should we test people in the community for MRSA, especially the high-risk groups? And one of these high-risk groups that particularly interested me was high school athletes, because I'm both a high school student and an athlete. And for the past three years, I've been studying this at the University of Pittsburgh and trying to determine when we should mandate skin testing for high school athletes. Scientists and companies are also trying to develop new antibiotics for MRSA and also looking into a MRSA vaccination. So far, I've talked to you about the MRSA as a silent epidemic, how antibiotic resistance is a big concern, and also how MRSA is very contagious. But now I want to share with you how each one of us can conquer the superbug in our everyday life. First, be sure to shower immediately after you participate in a sports game or a practice, or exercising at the gym. Also, wash your towels, sheets, and athletic clothes regularly, and bleach it if possible. Also, make sure that you keep um, your cuts and your scrapes and your wounds covered, because an open, door, an open sore on your skin is like an open door where bacteria can enter into your body. So keep this door closed by just covering your wounds. 
forget what you've all been told because sharing is not caring when it comes to bacteria and when it comes to personal items. So do not share your towels, your razors, um, even your cell phones with anybody. But there is one prevention method that has been proven to be our best weapon against MRSA, and that is, of course, hand washing and using hand sanitizer. So although MRSA is the silent epidemic, and it's been continually increasing, together we will conquer the superbug before it conquers us. Thank you for your attention today.